I think if anything, this further goes to prove that this industry is still fairly new, the social media industry, and we're still waiting for things to catch up to each other. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swell Entertainment. And usually my videos are spawned from a variety of different things. This one kind of had like a joint spawning. Mainly it spawned from my friend Margot, who some of you may be familiar with because I interviewed her in my TanaCon one year later video. It spawned from her messaging me and asking if I thought this thing was legal or not, or if this company was allowed to do this because she was like, I don't know if you would know the answer to this, but you also seem like you would know the answer to this. And the reality of it is, is I didn't really know the answer, but I'm fairly certain it's not Right, I don't think they're allowed to do that. I've talked previously about how TikTok and ads are now the bane of my existence. And I'm now part of the creator fund on TikTok. They somehow let me in, I don't understand. I think I've made a total of a dollar and 53 cents. And so I was like, you know, maybe I'll like get used to the ad because my brain is like, ah, yes, the ads are there to help pay me, you know? I, no, there's still too many ads. It does not help also that they are now pushing live streams way more. And the live streams they are pushing are all pirating SpongeBob episodes and various TV shows. I don't know why they're promoting copyrighted content. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about like, oh, it's like promoted by like the SpongeBob show. No, I mean, it's someone holding a phone while on the computer watching like an episode of SpongeBob at like a weird angle. It's very odd. I don't know why they're promoting that. You remove sex workers from your platform for just having their OnlyFans in their link trees, but yet you're allowing them to promote copyrighted content. Your priorities are all out of whack, TikTok. It makes no very, really no sense considering one is a higher DMCA risk to you. Like you're, there's a whole safe harbor thing involved here. But anyway, the text that Margot sent me was about parade ads. Parade is the parade underwear. Um, pretty much every influencer girly on Instagram that you know and love probably has been gifted parade at some point or has done a parade ad. They did a whole bunch of Black Friday sales and they were popping up incessantly on my for you page. Like every third video was a parade ad, okay? And I'm not just talking like, oh, it's a, it's a video from parade and they're just being pushed. I mean, they were like promoted, sponsored videos from parade themselves being promoted on the page. I would just scroll past them. I was getting annoyed this close to blocking them. I don't even know if that would work with ads, but I was getting really annoyed because it was the same videos being promoted. The video that she sent me was, hey, I saw a parade ad. And what they were doing was they were using the I Am Woman song with no credit to the artist and it was a promoted advertisement. And I was wondering if they were allowed to do that. And my first thought was, no, I don't think they're allowed to do that because, and this is where it kind of gets all over the place because it kind of brings into question who owns what on TikTok, technically. Music is one thing. Music, that makes things easier. Obviously the artist performing the song, who made the song, owns the song. But when you have something like TikTok, where you can kind of use anyone else's audio however you want, for the most part, it kind of brings into question who does what. However, when ads get involved, then it's a whole other thing. So, okay, I'm, I'm talking in circles, but that's basically what this video is going to be, is talking through who owns what on TikTok. Because there was this other video that went around of Lil Nas X at an award show, I believe, or a thing, a musical industry thing. <laughs> if anything, this is really going to prove that I know very frighteningly little about the music industry, despite how often I listen to music. And, you know, I, I know a lot about the film industry. I really should know more about the music industry because they're not the same thing, but they're adjacent. I should know more. I'm in LA. Who wants to be my teacher? <laughs> they were at a music thing, okay, with a bunch of other celebrities and he did a sound of the, uh, what do you want to tell Joe Byron right now? What's up, baby? Take me out to dinner with all these famous people. Fuck your life! Bing bong! If you see these dogs in your front yard, huh, just know upstairs I'm going hard. Bing bong! What do you want to tell Joe Byron right now? What's up, baby? Take me out to dinner. Hey, yo! I thought it was cute. Whatever. And then another girl on TikTok, and I cannot find this video. If I will link it down below if someone sends it to me. I tried to find it. I found an article later on, or I saw one. I briefly met, remember seeing this article. No one was able to find me this article. I was not able to find it. It's I, I'm having a rough time doing research lately. I'm just struggling because I remember something and then I can't remember the exact wording of the thing and then I can't find it. I need an FBI researcher friend. That's just what I need. Cause I used to be that girl and now I'm just not that girl anymore. <laughs> Uh, this girl made a video where she said, hi, the person featured in that video that you guys are quoting, 
who did that sound is actually homeless and you all owe him $200 now for using his sound. And I mean, I thought that was smart to try and tell famous people who are often unattached from reality that they owe money to someone when they're homeless. I think that there's nothing wrong with that personally. I don't see a problem with that. But a lot of people got pissed and it's like, oh, do we owe money to every single person whose audio we use? And that kind of sparked the conversation of who actually should be getting the money. And I mean, at the same time, I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Whether she was making a joke or was just like, hey, here's an opportunity to help someone. And here are famous people using the sound. Like, I don't know. I don't know her motivations. But I mean, when I first saw the video, I was like, yeah, you know what? Sure. Why not? Fuck it. Let's see. Give them money. Let's do it. Like, I, I think that was fine. But you know, then there also is that whole other thing that happened, still happens on TikTok. And I still think this was very funny. A lot of dances, popular dances on TikTok are created by black creators on the platform, but they're popularized and then co-opted by white creators or other creators, mostly white creators. I don't want to try and diminish that. It's, it's white creators basically taking the dance, not giving credit. And then they are basically the dance is then attributed to that famous white TikToker for the most part. And so this was basically put into motion during Megan Thee Stallion's body song when that came out where they were like, we're not going to make a dance to the song we're protesting and you guys get to figure it out. Make your own dance. Was it body? It was body, right? No, it was thought shit. That's what it was. It was thought shit. I'm wrong. It wasn't body. It was thought shit. The song literally goes hands on my knees, shaking my ass on my thought shit. I think that was the widest way I could have recited it. <laughs> and these creators, the, the dance that they came up with was like hands in the air, shaking their ass. <laughs> It was, it was funny, but it proved a point. It's the same conversation in a different sense, you know, because there's also a lot of issues with music. And I saw this happened with a song from Mothica years ago or a year, a year ago. Oh my God. It's been two years of the pandemic, but I mean, it's like, no, no. Over a year ago, I believe is when a song that she put out had been like basically edited and then attributed to someone else, but it was her music. And so she was like, and there's basically nothing I can do about it and all of that. And so I think in a music sense, it's a little more cut and dry, but then you have something like an audio. I believe it was Sailor J's music or not music, V2 video of her uh, contouring video about like, oh, we cannot let the men know that we are shapeshifters. Like that type of audio or whatever was used on TikTok. Most of the time that she, like she would not see those views. Those do not reflect the YouTube video. Those do not go back to her She's not seeing money from that or even the recognition from that unless someone credits her when they're using the sound, even though they just like, basically you can take anything you want and put it on TikTok. So you can like screen record it and then upload it and then use the sound yourself. And then the sound is then accredited to you. And TikTok's kind of getting better about this where like in the background of certain videos, like if I'm playing a song today, okay, and I take a TikTok and then eventually it'll say sound is from me contains music from, and then let's say Champagne Problems by Taylor Swift because that's the song that's been stuck in my head for a while. It'll be that. But basically I think that mainly is trying to avoid what happened with Twitch because what happened with Twitch, God, a year ago now, time is a black hole. Someone's gonna be like, it was like a month ago. And I'm gonna be like, I don't know. What happened with Twitch is that a bunch of Twitch streamers were kind of having panics and freaking out because a lot of companies were going in and DMCA takedowning their old, VODs because in the background of their live streams, they were playing music and the like, you know, it was kind of like, well, why is this happening? We're promoting you and doing X, Y, and Z. It's like I said, like, this is still a fairly new industry and so many established industries, like let's say the music industry has not caught up with certain elements of social media. Eventually they were like, Hey, we need to look at Twitch because we're not seeing this revenue from these streams, but they're getting, you know, X amount of money in this and we're not getting any of that. The music is being promoted. It's not being accredited, but it's being played or whatever, you know, like there's, there was a lot of that. I think eventually something like that is going to happen with TikTok, but then eventually, I mean, it's interesting. And I, maybe I have a different perspective because I'm a YouTuber and I've licensed footage for various projects before for film and TV, not film, TV shows like reality shows and things like that. For those of you who don't know, I licensed a clip of my, I went to TanaCon so you don't have to 
video to MTV when Tana turned 21 and did that whole video. It was bullshit. I got like $150 from that. People always tell me I should have gotten more, but I was not in the place that I am now. And then when I did the Dr. Phil episode, they paid me for that as well. And also I was told that I should have gotten more money from that, but I got God. The check for the payment came faster than the episode aired. I will say that. So that's where I came from with this I am woman thing. And let me pull up the art, the artist's name, Emmy Melly Music. She's the one who came out with the I am woman, I am fearless, I am sexy, I am divine song sound, all of that on TikTok. The sound that you all see when people are playing that music, it's literally her singing into the mic. So it kind of is like, it's her song, it's her song, but it's also technically a sound on the app. So I think that's why this is becoming into question here. I tried reaching out to her to see if maybe she had just licensed the music to parade for their advertisements. Like, hey, you can use it in ads on this. And like, there's a certain rate of grade and all of that. Did not hear back. I don't think I will. But um, I just wanted to at least ask if that was the case. Cause that very easily could be the case. And then, you know, we're not gonna credit you the music because we're paying you to use your music and you know, it'll, it'll come out later. And then you can promote and say that your ad, your music was used in this advertisement. Like there's a whole thing with that, with music licensing. This happened recently too in a different debate. And I almost made a video about this, but I didn't. The planters peanut jingle TikToks. Did you guys see this? I'm not gonna play the music because it's the same thing, but basically Planters was like, write us a jingle. And it kind of spawned an interesting discussion of people being like, oh no, we're not giving you free labor and free music. And then you're not gonna pay us. Another creator who apparently has done jingles, not for Planters, but other companies was like, here is the licensing agreement that I paid and how long it was for and how much I was paid both times that I did this. And it was like something upwards of $10,000. But basically Planters was asking TikTokers to make them jingles for free. And most of the jingles were like, nut in my butt and things like that, which were funny. It was hilarious. It was great. It was like, yeah, screw you. Here's the, here's your jingle, you freaking peanut. You know, it was great. I loved it. But it, it was that conversation as well. Cause it's like, okay, who owns it then? You know, like it, that, that was an interesting thing. So it was at least in that situation, most people were like, you know, screw you peanut. We're going to make you a joke song of very fun. Margo asked, hey, is this allowed? Because, and then I later followed up and was like, you know, I think this could be, I think this is a discussion we should talk about. So, I mean, I'm gonna make a video. Can you say anything else you remember about the ad? And I sent her a screenshot of, I think a Call of Duty advertisement. No, it was a PlayStation ad. Okay, and I'll put it on the screen. And it was for the music segment where usually it would tell you what the sound is or if it belongs to the person who made the video or if they're using another sound or whatever. It said promoted music, okay? And when you clicked on it, it you couldn't, it wouldn't take you anywhere. It would say, this does not work for you or something like that. Like it doesn't take you anywhere. And so there was no credit for the music or anything like that. It would just say promoted music. And uh, they also had their comment sections turned off and all of that. And for the most part with parade ads, I don't think they were turned off. I can't remember. I have not seen a parade ad in a, about a few days now. And I tried going through their profile itself, but obviously it's a drastically different videos uh, on there than on what's promoted. So I kind of looked back and forth. Let me first make a distinction for you because I'm sure someone's gonna bring this up. There is a difference between a brand making a video using a sound and a brand using a sound and then using a promoted feature and paying to promote that using the same sound and then getting potentially more sales or clicks or whatever from that sound. Does that make sense? Like for example, the Duolingo owl is killing it on TikTok. Okay, Duolingo is killing it. They're hilarious. Their social media team is great. Most social media interns, not interns, people running social media for brands on TikTok are annoying as hell, frankly. Some of them are very fun. Some of them are like, okay, cool. Here's behind the scenes of this. Like the, we are watcher for those guys. Their social media person is very fun and showing a lot of behind the scenes. And like, I used to be a fan of them and, and would make fan edits. And now I get to, oh, now I'm paid to do it. It's, it's fun, but a lot of other ones are like, hey, can you please give us a lot of followers so my boss doesn't get mad at me? No, don't lie on your resume. Do your job, be entertaining, and then you can get followers. But then you have Duolingo Owl who are like, hi, yes, we are Hellspawn, we might be gay, but also we're gonna, you know, be an asshole on a lot of other posts and very fun on others. You know, it's a lot of that. It'd be very different though if they were using the sounds and then also doing promoted advertisements on the platform. Like them using sounds, like let me pull up one of their videos actually, let's pull up Duolingo. Like here's them using a sound, uh, the pumpkin love sound. Yeah, and can I also have the 
Pumpkin that's one thing. Them using a sound that's popular and trending is one thing. It's very different from that than like, let's say Denny's on Tumblr trying to co-op memes, you know, and, and ruining the joke, you know, it's it's different. I don't know how to fully explain that it's different, but the, the vibes are different. It'd be different if they used this and then promoted Duolingo and did a promoted advertisement on TikTok. So the thing about TikTok, and I don't know if you guys remember this, they haven't done this so much, I, or I haven't seen as much complaints about this in recent years, but I mean, if you watch some of my other TikTok videos, then you'll know that I, you know, you guys get to hear my remarkable fake singing voice whenever I need to use a audio that has music in the background or a video that has music in the background and I sing over it so I don't get the copyright claim from the music company themselves. However, there is also, I think it's UMG. It might be UMG. I don't know if you guys remember, but a couple of years ago when TikTok was like super cringe before the pandemic stopped, some of you are gonna be like, it's still cringe, whatever. It's more normal now. It's fun cringe, you know, that's part of the charm. Before it was just cringe to even have it on your phone. But at the time when a lot of commentary YouTubers and such were talking about TikToks, a lot of their videos would be copyright claimed by UMG and a variety of other companies that would, I think, copyright claim it because they were the ones that licensed the music to TikTok for the TikToks that they were using. But however, a lot of them, I think, also were being claimed because they were using sounds from TikTok as well. If that is true, and that's not just something that I'm misremembering, then is that to say that TikTok owns the audios? Like if I make a video today and the audio goes viral and it ends up in a TikTok advertisement, am I waiving my right to sue TikTok for copyright infringement even though I technically own that sound because it's my voice and it's me and it's my video under my profile or do they own it? You know, it's that type of thing. Whereas technically with YouTube, I own my videos. I'm using their platform and that's how I'm distributing them, but it's still my intellectual property regardless of what I'm talking about. These videos belong to me. I am the owner of the videos. So the promoted music, I tried looking up to see, you know, who can use it what for, uh, I was trying to find more information about the TikTok copyright claim system, but also about, you know, who owns what music and things like that. And it led me to an article talking about uh, TikTok's commercial music library and commercial sound library. So basically they have a full separate library that is kind of like the YouTube library for sound where it's like copyright free music, but it's specific to TikTok. And it's specific to TikTok for companies and creators who are doing sponsorships or advertisements so that they don't get copyright claimed from promoting on the app. I searched both Emmy Melly's name and the I Am Woman, neither popped up on there. So they are not associated with that. I was like, oh, maybe this is it. Maybe she licensed it to TikTok and this is the whole thing. No, did not do that. I mean, I'm kind of talking in circles now, but I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this video was just kind of being like, who owns what? I mean, obviously at the end of the day, Emmy Melly owns the I Am Woman song. That's her, she made that song. That's one thing. But then the question comes in about, you know, who owns sound? Who should be getting the money from the sounds of people using their videos? If I have an audio that goes viral tomorrow, should I have more than just veto power of taking down and having that sound removed using a DMCA takedown claim? And that has happened before um, on TikTok. Like there's a lot of sounds where technically someone's just like, yeah, I'm done. So they delete the audio, they delete the sound. All the, the sounds are removed from those videos and it's like, this sound has been removed, you get that bar. Or there's a notice that says like the audio has been claimed or whatever, for whatever reason. That has happened before on the platform. And I'm assuming TikTok is going to be trying to crack down more on things like that and kind of making it easier for companies to do that so that they don't see something like what happened with Twitch where all of these creators are getting their accounts taken down, suspended, or their their whole backlog is removed because of a DMCA takedown because Twitch wasn't on top of things or there wasn't safeguards in place. So I don't know. I think overall, we're still in the infancy of TikTok. We're still in the infancy of ownership of audio and sounds and all of that on TikTok. I mean, we're still in the infancy of making money on TikTok. There's still plenty of creators who have millions on TikTok and make very little money from the millions of views they're getting because they're really bad at monetizing. Like I had a video go viral, not viral, viral, but like viral in regards to the size of my channel platform on TikTok. And I think I made two cents that day in total from like 300,000 views or something. It was nothing. If Emmy Melly sees this, uh, it looks like Parade was using your advertisement. Uh, if Parade sees this, did you license that sound? Did you work with them? Is there a way you can credit her at the very least? It's, it's her music. She has every right to go 
And if she finds information about this, you know, take down those advertisements because it's her music and they're not crediting her and she's not seeing the licensing fees from it or she's not seeing, you know, the plays or anything like that from it. So that's my view on it, especially with music. Um, with audios, I think if a brand wants to use any audio, they need to reach out to you. See, but then we also have the things like what happened with Halara, where I'm fairly certain these girls were not being paid for being featured in the Halara as, and instead they were just doing their sponsorships or they were being gifted free product in exchange for being in the advertisements. In which case I think that's BS because then at Halara was seeing potentially tens of thousands of dollars from these advertisements and these creators were seeing nothing in exchange for shitty product, frankly. And like, that's my whole thing. It's like, you wanna make, read the contracts, ask for to sign something, ask to see something. I have this whole other thing with, you know, the uh, sponsorships that are then turned into ads. I think this is still an ongoing topic of who owns what. Cause I mean, I'm of the opinion that I, I own my videos. I own my videos. If anyone tries to steal them out from under me, I will send a copyright claim. But at the same time, if you use like a clip in an audio or something, I'm very careful about that and not copyright claiming those. And that's part of the reason I don't work with an MCN because a lot of the selling points that, or they think is a selling point with an MCN is that it's like, oh yeah, do if you deal with your stuff being stolen a lot, we're very good on top of that. And I'm like, why the fuck? No, they can use a clip. It's fine. Like one clip, that's fine. There is fair use. There is that. You don't need to go and copyright claim freaking everything. TikTok is still the wild, wild west. It's interesting to see who owns what. And it's like, at the same time, it's like, can you be fine with one part? Like, can you be fine with people using your audio on the app? Yeah, I think, I think you can. I think you can be fine with your audio going viral and being used as like a popular sound on TikTok and still not be okay with it being used and co-opted in an advertisement for TikTok or an advertisement for another brand without seeing any payment from it. That's my view of it. Maybe you have a different view. Let me know if you think that, you know, if you make a sound like saying that you like butt stuff or something on TikTok and that goes viral, do you think you own the butt stuff sound? Let me know, <laughs> comment down below. Do you also think that advertisements on TikTok are still unfolding and that, see, the thing with TikTok too is like there was an advertisement, a promoted advertisement for an Amazon ad not too long ago that I believe Eddie Burback was the one who talked about it on TikTok. And then a representative, I think for Insider or The Post or something like that, reached out to Amazon. We're like, we did, we're not associated with that ad. We don't know what this is. It was a very weird ad. And so it's like, sometimes you have people who are like, let's say not resellers, but the affiliate guys promote their stuff to try and get more affiliate usage from their links on TikTok. So I'm wondering how that's all gonna play out. I think we're, I think there's gonna be an advertising reckoning on TikTok in the coming years. I don't know when it'll be, but I think it'll come. Also, I think TikTok at the end of the day, it's still always in flux, you know, they can be terminated tomorrow from the US government. Who knows? Make sure you have copies of your content. Are you on TikTok? Have you made a sound that's gone viral on TikTok? Have you not made a sound that's gone viral on TikTok, but you are a content creator in another regard and you found out that someone had uploaded your content separately to TikTok and now your sound's going viral on TikTok without any credit to you? Do you also think that brands should pay creators and musicians, even indie artists, for their right to use their music? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. I have merch, like that super fun mug back there, all linked down below. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support my Patreon, love these down below. If you'd like to know more on social media, it'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it, have a lovely day, goodbye. At the end of the day, you are the one making the content and if another company is trying to profit off of your content, you deserve to be paid for your content. Thank you, Alan, Burden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Hollow, Jucka, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme, Lord, Red, Michael, Michael, Jane, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Prowler, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Zendry.